is a pleasure and a privilege to give this talk at Abyscon 2022. And I would like to thank Professor Nintamani and Dr. Uttam Soni for inviting me to give this keynote address. I would like to start by giving a synopsis within three slides of the whole talk. And it is the title is Radiotherapy During Lumpectomy for Breast Cancer is better for patients because it leads to fewer deaths than conventional radiotherapy and leads to better quality of life. So you can see this sunrise um, going on to having surgery um, and then sun would set, treatment would finish and sun would set just once and with better length and quality of life. And perhaps it is because of this that to our surprise, National Institute of Health Research put up this on their website, the list of five amazing health research breakthroughs. And among the list was the COVID vaccine and COVID treatments and target IORT. And in, the, in this current month, the top radiotherapy journal has the most downloaded paper uh, in uh, breast cancer is the target IORT paper. And it's in, list in the fifth in amongst all papers. Why might it be the case? It is because target IORT improves the quality of life and reduces deaths. So that is the message really for the whole talk. And it is probably this reason that over 50,000 patients have been treated all over the world. And each of these dots represents one, one center and they have given me the data that has given rise to this total number. Uh, 260 centers from 38 countries have treated patients with target IORT and all based on the research that we had done in University College London. I would like to thank the writing committee, Professor Michael Baum, Professor Jeffrey Tobias, and Professor Max Balsara, as well as all the authors of the recent papers for their contribution, and the trial steering committee, as well as acknowledgements are due to patients from these 33 centers and their individual clinical teams, without which this research could not have happened. My conflict of interest is, uh, potential conflict of interest is grant funding from UCL and honoraria from Carl Zeiss. So, to start from the beginning, over the last 100 years, we have challenged the dogma of radical surgery and moved to more targeted surgery. And in the last 25 years, we have moved from radical radiotherapy to more targeted radiotherapy. And that is what I'm going to hope to tell you in the next 20 minutes. And that is, the, uh, that is what we found is that target IORT should be a standard of patients because it is better for them. It is more convenient. It improves quality of life. It is done within the operation theater. They don't have to come back for any further radiotherapy. It reduces deaths and there is improved survival in patients with grade one and two cancers. And when there is no option to give excellent beam radiotherapy because they've already had it, patients can still save their breast by giving target IORT. So this is a long list, which you can see uh, is the benefits to the patients. So target IORT is an academically driven and compassion driven invention. And this is because you know the main treatment for breast cancer can be a lumpectomy or mastectomy, but after a lumpectomy, patient has to go every day to radiotherapy for three to six weeks. And this is not very nice. Sometimes it's prohibitive, which is why they choose to have a mastectomy. And I faced this when I saw patients in Tata Memorial Hospital, where after having told the diagnosis of breast cancer, I had to ask them, can you come for radiotherapy for um, uh, several weeks after the operation? If they said yes, we could preserve the breast. If they said no, we had to do a mastectomy. But this is not limited to um, India. It is, it is present in Australia, in Denmark, in US, and in the UK. And you can see this map of UK where each circle represents a radiotherapy center with a 13 mile radius, and patients have to travel more than 26 miles if they are in the green area. And in general, each patient receiving target IORT would save 750 miles of travels and 250 kilograms of carbon dioxide. Therefore, adopting target IORT would actually um, reduce global warming. And this is an important factor, particularly today in the days of climate change. And I got this map using the data from 2021 from Atomic Energy Regulatory Board the map of India with radiotherapy centers. And you can see there is so few centers in India to give radiotherapy. So all of the people would either have to travel to these centers to have their radiotherapy or simply have a mastectomy or not have any radiotherapy at all. So sub-optimal uh, treatment. In addition to this, harmful effects of scattered radiation are very well known. The nearby organs of at risk are the heart, the lung, esophagus, which can cause fatal cancers and fatal heart attacks. And this is much more in smokers. 
So patients should not have to choose between a mastectomy and no radiotherapy, which is why is the option for giving intraoperative radiotherapy. And the rationale came from the clinical and biological, clinical factors as well as biological factors. The biology came from the whole organ analysis of mastectomy specimen in which I found that there are other cancers in the breast scattered all over the breast. Now, the, the, this is paradoxical because if recurrence occurs with or without radiotherapy, it occurs mainly around the primary tumor. If it occurs elsewhere, it is at the same rate as in the other breast. We don't treat the other breast. So it is sensible to give target radiotherapy to the area around the tumor. So we published this data in 1996, and in 1997, we presented the rationale in the Lancet. And this is the way it was developed, an academically driven trial, which led to collaboration with the industry and the clinical trial in 1998. 2000 was the clinical trial started. The technique is straightforward. We made these uh, spherical applicators for various sizes. It goes in the tumor bed, which uh, immediately after lumpectomy, Radiation is focused to the tumor bed and targets tissues at the highest risk of local recurrence with the, with the principle of precision and immediacy. And this is individualized according to the size of the tumor with applicators going from 1.5 to 5 centimeters. So you can treat patients with up to three and a half centimeters of cancer excision. This is how it is used in the, during COVID. You can see me in COVID gear and this is how it looks in the operation theater. And the technique, uh, this is the first case done in July 2098. You can see Professor Michael Baum and Professor Jeffrey Tobias uh, along with me, with whom we pioneered this technique. For the surgeons in the audience, you can see how it is important to get it right. The applicator needs to be opposed to the green tumor bed at the right depth. The spur string needs to be put at the right depth so that the whole green tumor bed opposes to the applicator and its skin is kept at least eight or nine millimeters away. So this is a very careful purse string taken after a very good um, hemostasis. And you can see how it, how it completely opposes and holds the applicator in place. It's a very simple technique to learn. For the trial, we had kept that you need to do five cases and then you can start participating in the trial. So does it work? So for this, the test is a randomized controlled trial in which 2,200 and 98 patients participated from the from year 2000 to 20, uh, 2012. Patients had to be more than 45 with a unifocal invasive ductal carcinoma. They did not need to have an MRI scan. Patients are randomized to receive target IORT at a risk adapted approach versus EBRT. The first results were published in 2010 and it was published in the Lancet and they put our uh, uh, conclusion on the front page that it should be an alternative to whole breast radiotherapy. That was a nice surprise. We published our survival results in 2013. And while waiting for the long-term results, we tried to assess the other factors. We found that cosmetic outcome is better with target IORT. We found that quality of life is superior. Both radiation-related quality of life and breast-related quality of life is superior with target IORT. We found it causes less pain, less breast and arm symptoms with target IORT and patients prefer target IORT compared to whole breast radiotherapy, uh, even with a hypothetically higher risk. And now we know that the local control is the same. And this study in 2021 from the West Coast of America found that when given a choice, 75% of the patients will choose target IORT over whole breast radiotherapy or no radiotherapy. So this is a very important paper that shows what patients want. It is cost-saving in the US, it's cost-saving in the UK. It reduces patients' travels, as we have seen, and this has a big environmental and social impact. It also improves tumor microenvironment. Surgical wounding causes a wound fluid that is stimulated to cancer cells. But when you have patients receiving IORT, the wound fluid from such patients completely abrogates this proliferating stimulatory effect of wound fluid. You can see this, how there is few, fewer cells which are invaded, as well as fewer cells, but the mobility is greatly reduced. So these are all the benefits of targeted, targeted technique. So now what are the long-term outcomes? Remember that breast cancer has a long natural history. So long-term outcomes are important. And what we did here is we kept a big emphasis on completeness of follow-up. We did not unblind the trial until we had complete follow-up which means at least 95% patients had at least five-year follow-up and at least 90% patients had at least 10-year follow-up or were seen within the last year. Teams from all over the world helped to get this um, data back to us. 
the C2 team in UCL was most uh, imp uh, was fantastic work by them. And therefore, target A has more data, more follow-up data than any other partial breast radiation trial for invasive breast cancer. You can see these skyscraper graphs with each graph showing the number of patients with that many years of follow-up more than any other clinical trial testing the same question. The patients were equal in terms of their tumor and patient characteristics. And this is really important in terms of age and BMI, which are risk factors for other cancer deaths. And you'll see how that is important. No difference in tumor factors. These are the advantages, very good, big advantage during COVID, but the patient is asking, what are my chances of living without the cancer coming back? And here are the answers. The long-term follow-up of target A trial found at the maximum follow-up of 19 years, published in the British Medical Journal and British Journal of Cancer in the last two years. These are the results. In terms of local control, there was no difference in the two groups for invasive local recurrence free survival or just all local recurrence free survival, no difference at all. What are the chance of preserving the breast? There was no difference in the uh, chance of preserving the breast, whether you got six weeks of whole breast radiotherapy or three weeks of whole breast radiotherapy or just a single dose during the operation within a risk adapted approach. What are the chance of distant disease free survival remaining free from distant disease? No difference at all. Local control was the same according to treatment received as well. You know that 851, 899 patients received just target. Their outcome was the same as those who received EBRT, yeah, including those who had external beam radiotherapy in addition as part of the risk adapted approach. Now we know one important point, local recurrence after EBRT is a harbinger of overall prognosis. And what happens to the local recurrence after IORT? It was different. If you see hazard of death after EB local recurrence after EBRT was 42% at 12 years, but hazard of death after local recurrence after target IORT was no different from that without local recurrence. So the prognosis remains very good in spite of local recurrence. As regards subgroup analysis, subgroup analysis found there was no difference in local control between the two arms of the trial, irrespective of the tumor subtypes, as long as the patients were eligible for the trial. And you must remember that there were patients, a significant number of patients who were at higher risk. And I'll come to that in a minute. So what is the chance of survival from breast cancer? So the mortality specific to breast cancer was no different between the two arms of the trial. And this is an expanded graph with up to zero to 20% on the y-axis no difference in these lines at all. So breast cancer mortality was no different. And this is the bonus. The bonus, rather fantastic news, was that nearly halving of deaths from other causes. So non-breast cancer mortality was significantly reduced. So there were fewer deaths from uh, causes such as cardiovascular causes, lung problems, and other cancers. So this is a significant benefit of target IORT. Now, this is not a surprise because we know that whole breast radiotherapy causes cardiac perfusion defects within six months, and it leads to fatal cancer such as lung cancer and esophageal cancer. So this is not a surprise. If by avoiding such scattered irradiation, at the same time giving a effective radiotherapy to the localized focused targeted area, we have managed to get this survival benefit. And this is particularly important in smokers. In smokers, the scattered irradiation increases the deaths from heart attacks and lung cancers to up to 23%. That's absolute, a quarter of patients will die from it. This is a 6% increase, which could never be compensated by any benefit from radiotherapy at all. So I think it's unethical not to offer patients target IORD when they are smokers. This is a very important point. One important message here is overall survival benefit. So. In the subgroup analysis, we found that survival, overall survival, was significantly better if the patients had a grade one or grade two tumors, irrespective of anything else, whether known positive or not or whatever. So as long as they were grade one or two, which was the most common type of cancers, 1,796 patients, we found a survival benefit. And this survival benefit was not small in magnitude. If you see, the mortality reduction came from 15% to 10.5%. And this is a large mortality difference in grade one and two cancers. In grade three cancers, which did form a substantial proportion of these patients, 443 patients, there was absolutely no difference in mortality. So there is no reason not to give target IORT in grade three cancers. They can well have 
target IOT, there isn't any problem. They have all the benefits of quality, improved quality of life. And this 4.5% difference you may think is small, but it is no different to that one gets by receiving Herceptin. So in perspective, patients receiving Herceptin with grade one and two cancers who are less than two centimeters ER positives, they get a benefit of about 3.8% at eight years and the hazard ratio is 0.68, which is very similar to that of target IORT. Herceptin damages the heart and costs 50,000 pound dollars, whereas in uh, target IORT is cheaper and actually protects the heart. So this is one way surgeons and radiation oncologists can give the same benefit as what Herceptin might give. So these are the new insert of the targeted trial. We know that it can be used in patients with uh, all types of cancers, it, apart from lobular cancer, uh, as long as they're suitable for target IOT, there's an improvement in overall survival. If you want to know who gets external beam radiotherapy in addition to target, you can visit this website and you can know as a guide. Local recurrence after IORT has the same good prognosis. And there is one point which I will not explain here in detail, but you can go on the scan the QR code and see is that there seems to be a beneficial abscopal effect of giving radiotherapy during surgery at the time of trauma of surgery, which may be anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory, and which seems to have a beneficial effect of reducing mortality because it is still present even when you get external beam radiotherapy. So the first results were published in 2010 and long-term results have confirmed that breast cancer control is the same as whole breast radiotherapy and there are fewer non-breast cancer deaths leading to an improvement in overall survival in grade one and two cancers with no detriment in grade three cancers. Of course, many studies have shown how it improves the quality of life, cosmesis and reduced pain. There are two or three nuances that you need to see here. First is that the target A population was not a low risk population at all. And this is in contrast with other trials of partial breast radiation, as well as no radiotherapy trials. 85% of the patients were younger than 70. A large proportion of patients were either node positive, 22% were node positive, and large proportion were ER negative or grade three cancers. And the numbers in these cases were more than 400 or 450. So it was not a low risk trial at all, much higher risk patients. And this is, this is similar to the population we would see in our clinics. In addition, it is not that these patients who were at higher risk received whole breast radiotherapy. A large proportion of them did not receive in additional whole breast radiotherapy after target IORT. So most of them were treated just with target IORT. 78% of grade three tumors, 82% of ER negative tumors, and 63% of node positive tumors. What happens if there is no radiotherapy? PRIME2 trial was a large trial with long follow-up who, who, who were, um, whose data was published or presented in San Antonio, and this is their data. And it questions the idea of no radiotherapy. Is it a good idea? I don't believe it is. In the PRIME2 trial at 10 years, 9.8% patients received whole breast, uh, uh, had a local recurrence because they received no radiotherapy. And this is despite the patient selection being extremely, um, extremely uh, strict. Patients who are elderly, grade one or two, had to be ER positive, had to be node negative, and had to be margins clear. Despite this, 10% of them had local recurrence and they lived, these patients lived for 80% of them lived for 10 years. So do you want your patients to get a local recurrence at 10% at, of 10%? And what happened about survival? Their survival was no better. Despite avoiding the dangers of scattered irradiation, the survival was no better. And I believe that is because this extra benefit, a small benefit was completely uh, taken away, wiped out by possible increase in breast cancer deaths. If you see their data, you find that cardiovascular and other cancer deaths are very similar to that of target IORT. The reduction is very similar, but total deaths are the same, which means the breast cancer deaths must have increased. And whereas we target this benefit of avoiding scattered irradiation gets translated into overall benefit because there is effective radiotherapy and breast cancer mortality is not reduced, not increased. And what do we see in this paper? This paper came from the SEER data set in the US where they found an improved survival in those who had IORT compared with no radiotherapy. Although this is a propensity match study and has all its caveats, there does seem to be that there's definite, um, not no worsening in patients who have IORT. And patients want it. 75% of patients who were given the option of having target IORT took it. Only 5% of patients 
chose to have no radiotherapy. What about the fast forward trial? This is a big problem. Fast forward was pushed during COVID in the UK, even before the results were published. And this is giving much more dose, much more dose per dose uh, is given to the breast and it's finished in five days, but it radiates the whole breast, which is backward when we don't want to radiate the whole breast. There was no reduction in mortality, scattered irradiation occurred to all these organs, nearby organs, and there was a significant increase in local fibrosis and in duration. A quarter of patients complained of hardened breast and the physician associated hardness was 19 times more. And we are seeing this more and more in our patients now in the, after the, in the follow-up following the pandemic. And this is not what we want our patients to suffer from. Whereas target gives better quality of life, rest pain, better breast related quality of life and fewer deaths. So it is actually fast forward is going backward. There are other methods of partial breast radiation, for example, brachytherapy. And I would like patients to be shown this photograph and compare that with this photograph to see which one they want. It is an additional procedure. You need special operation theaters, special lead lined walls, and there is no reduction in mortality. There is still scattered irradiation. External beam radiotherapy partial breast also is a problem because it causes increased local toxicity and no improvement in, uh, no reduction in mortality. Elliot is different from target because it does involve significant, um, significant um, dissection of tissue, breast from skin, breast from the um, chest wall. And this causes deoxygenation and deoxygenated tissue is not, doesn't respond well to radiation, which is probably why Elliot trial did not find good outcomes. You can find this comparison in this paper in British Journal of Cancer published last year. And we have published other papers in the Red Journal, in Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology. We've shown how there is now powerful evidence to change practice. And that has led to worldwide adoption in France, in Germany, with oncoplastic surgery, in Europe, in South Africa, in China, in Russia, in US. All these results are very similar to those found in the Target A trial. So it is not the only place where we have found these results. Trials all over the world have found similar results. South America and in India. The first case in India was done in year 2009. Uh, and I, I was there when it was being done. I, I helped them. And in the, Dr. Sharma has done cases in Bombay, 51 cases from 2011. And in most recently, Dr. Sandeep Nayak and Dr. Nisha Vishnu have done cases, have started doing cases in Fortis Hospital in Bangalore. So <coughs> the paper showing this worldwide adoption is available, published recently, and we have presented the data. And these are some people who are using target IORT, who have been meeting every year in all parts of the world. And just before the pandemic, we met in 2020, and we met a few months ago, last month, in, um, in 16 countries, representatives had come to this meeting. It has been covered by media um, all over the world for the last so many years. And NICE gave approval in 2014 and final approval in 2018 to those centers who have the equipment and the expertise. Australia already had given approval in 2015, and we shared the front page on top of the fold with, uh, uh, with President Biden two years ago. So what can be the downside? This is what might be the downside considered by some as it's disruptive to the, tech, to the uh, system, but it is the least disruptive treatment for the patient. And if patients pay the same amount of money for external beam and IORT, then no other factor comes in the picture while deciding which patients should get what treatments. I've been speaking about target A trial, which is completed and results published. Target B trial is something that is based on the fact that we got better outcomes in those patients who are younger and at higher risk. So these are patients younger than 45 or at high risk of local recurrence who would not have otherwise received target. They are post neo adjuvant chemotherapy patients, for example, where we found in these studies better outcomes. And this trial has now already recruited 1,696 patients. And it's a trial of superiority of giving target boost during surgery compared with external beam boost. We have, we'll await for those results. But target A results are already there. These are the conclusions that it is better uh, in terms of quality of life, similar in terms of breast cancer control, improved overall survival if grade one and two, and uh, so much more convenient to the patient. 
If you want the results in one go, these are the results. You can see them in a single slide. You can take a photograph of this slide or scan the QR code to get the um, go to the papers as a PDF file completely. So this is one slide which shows all the results. Even this slide also shows the results in which you can see survival in terms of 12-year Kaplan Meier plots are very similar in terms of breast cancer control and deaths are fewer when you have uh, grade one and two cancers and uh, grade three, there is no difference. So these are the results all in a single page. So if you want, you can take a screenshot or you can take a picture. And I shall leave you with the patients. Um... I'm Marcel Bernstein. Eight years ago, I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. I had it for two months only before I was cured. I had Target, IORT, at the same time as the operation to remove the cancer. I spent one night in hospital and I was back at work within days. No pain at any time, no complications, no scarring. I can't even tell where on my breast the surgery was. And no recurrence. Eight years. And that isn't just me being lucky. Studies show that my experience is similar to that of other women who've had Target. I am so happy. I was able to have this treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions. So uh, it has been a pleasure to um, give this keynote lecture. Um, I would have loved to be there, but it's been completely impossible because of family commitments. Thank you. <laughs>